All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Wonderful. Before we dive into it, um, a quick agenda and just a few um, best practices on decorum today. So we're going to start off with an overview of the Rust DLT grant. And then we're going to spend uh, some time going through a couple demos of Zoom technologies that align really well with this grant program. Also, you could reach out to grants at zoom.us with any questions that you have. So getting started here, first I want to introduce you to the Zoom Grant Assistance Resource. This is a free resource available to Zoom's customers in education, healthcare, and government. We are powered by a third-party consulting firm called Learn Design Apply, um, and we contract with Zoom, again, to provide free grant support for their customers. There's a lot of different services that we can provide depending on what you are looking for. Um, so we do a lot of education on funding opportunities, such as this presentation today. We can help you find programs that are going to be a good fit for your organization, your goals, and what you're looking to do. Um, we can also help you come up with a funding strategy, perhaps given the scope of your project, there might not be one perfect grant that solves all your problems. Maybe we have to look at a few different programs to help you get to where you're looking to get to. Um, and if there is a grant that you want to pursue in partnership with us, we can provide very compre uh, comprehensive application support. We typically act as um, you know, your project manager throughout the process. We can help you with paperwork, make sure that you're filling everything out correctly and just be there with you every step of the way. Also, if you're looking to maybe hire a grant writer, I know some of you might have internal grant writers, but they might be stretched very thin. We're happy to try to connect you with somebody that we've worked with um, who knows your region well, your project type really well, and just facilitate that introduction. And then lastly, as some of you might know, uh, a lot of times, you know, when you get the grant, it's great, it's exciting, but there's a bit of work to do on the implementation side as well. So if there's anything we can help with on that end, uh, be it, again, paperwork assistance, helping you with reimbursement requests, figuring out who to reach out to at an agency for questions, we're so happy to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into this one specific grant program that will be the focus of today's session. But again, just know this is only one of the many programs our team can assist you with. We're gonna be talking about a grant from the USDA called the Rural Utility Service Distance Learning and Telemedicine Grant. We often call it the Rust DLT or just the T, uh, DLT grant for short. Uh, this is a very long standing grant program. It's been around in some form or another since the 90s. And it's all about funding interactive, uh, collaborative, real time distance learning or telemedicine projects that provide services to individuals in rural communities really the focus of the grant. Um, it's very unique in that it's super technology focused. So you have a lot of other grants sometimes that are broader, that, you know, try to solve the problem of bridging the digital divide in a different way. Maybe they facilitate uh, the hiring of additional personnel, for instance. This isn't um, quite a grant for that, like personnel costs don't work well under this grant. But this grant is really great for technology. It tries to solve the problem of how do we get resources out into rural communities that need them the most. And the way that it solves that problem is by enabling you to buy interactive technologies, usually through video, you know, to facilitate interactions like this. Um, another really great thing about this, this program is it's pretty flexible. So it's pretty open in how it defines both distance learning and telemedicine. And it's also very open in terms of who's eligible to apply and who you can work with. So as um, we get into the details in just a bit, you'll see that with this grant, it often makes sense to partner with other organizations. And the great thing is you don't have to have existing formal partnerships in order to go after this grant. You can partner, I mean, essentially with anybody who wants to work with you on one of these projects. And the last bit, um, like I said, this grant's been around for a really long time. It's a very consistent, very reliable source of funding. And in a lot of ways with this grant, once you get this funding once, they tend to love to fund the same groups time and time again. They want to see you expand your reach, work with additional groups, you know, bring additional services to new communities. So it's not a disadvantage to 
receive this funding uh, and then try to go after it again. If anything, again, they love um, they love supporting the same groups. They love seeing that you've made a good use of their investment and then investing in you again. Now, jumping into a few details, I'm going to lightly touch on project design for this grant, but I really encourage you to reach out if you want to learn more about this and we can figure out uh, what kind of project design makes the most sense for your organization and your initiatives. The typical project design with this grant is you will probably be connecting sites to one another to share resources and you'll either connect rural sites to one another to share resources or you might connect those sites to a hub and a hub is a service provider. They might be rural themselves or they might be in a larger metro area. That's really fine for the hub because the hub is in this project to send out content and send out services to rural communities. There is also an option to uh, share resources with mobile units such as ambulances and mobile learning stations and also individuals located in their home but there is um, an extra restriction on the project design with this. In this case, the content itself would have to come from a rural area. So just to give you an example, the first one, you could maybe have uh, multiple rural high schools working with a community college in a large metro area. And the community college sends out content to these rural high schools and that's how they all work together. With this example, you would probably have the rural high school itself sending out content to students located in their homes because maybe students still live an hour, hour plus away from that high school. And that's the optimal uh, method of, uh, you know, that school participating in distance or hybrid education. But the big thing, I think the big takeaway is this grant really cares about location. And a lot of times that's one of the first things we'll ask you if you're exploring this grant is where are you located and where are the individuals that you're trying to bring services to? Where are they located? As far as budget um, and expenditures, this is a three-year grant. There is a match that's required with this grant. It's going to be 15% of the federal request, which is about 13% of your total project costs. And I'll give an example here. Historically, in recent years, the award range for this grant has been between $50,000 all the way up to a million dollars for the grant amount. So let's say you're trying to go after that full million, you're requesting a million dollar grant, that means your match would be $150,000, meaning your total project costs would then be that $1.15 million you see here. That is Again, historically, the most uh, that you can incorporate into a Rust DLT grant budget. And again, reminding you, very technology focused grant. This is really great for video conferencing hardware, software, uh, services that are necessary to put this equipment in place and maintain it. Uh, all really great under this grant, but it's not going to be a grant that funds personnel. Um, general supplies, uh, construction, anything like that. It's really, really meant for this interactive, typically video, but they've been expanding that in some ways, but interactive technology that facilitates distance learning or telemedicine. And the last bit here on timing. Um, so this grant usually will come out every year. Um, sometimes they delay it a little bit, but we're expecting the next cycle for fiscal year 2024 to come out very soon, likely in December, uh, so late this year, right around the holidays or early 2024. Once the grant is released, it is a pretty quick application cycle. It's just 60 days. So we always encourage anyone who's interested to start planning their project as early as possible. Now is a great time. And if this year is a little bit rushed, this grant does recur. So this is always something you can plan for, for the following year and well into the future. So now I just want to take you through a few project examples that we've seen be very popular with K-12s and also with government agencies. I do just want to say this is uh, really a short list. I mean, again, this grant is very open-ended, very flexible in terms of what can count as distance learning, what can count as telemedicine, who you can work with. We always say you're limited only by your imagination and a few other <laughs> restrictions in this grant. But again, it's really, really open. So this is just meant to give you some ideas. Uh, very popular project example. Again, some of these I've already alluded to, but 
um, you can do course sharing. You could share courses between rural high schools. You can share professional development resources. You can have maybe multiple rural schools connecting with a higher education institution for dual credit opportunities, for college readiness, um, all kinds of resources. Uh, you can also have K-12s working with uh, departments of health. So maybe you want to provide school-based health services. A lot of times that's one of the best ways of reaching young people in rural communities for healthcare services, because school is somewhere they have to go every single day. And uh, that's a, becoming a very popular uh, project type under this grant. Um, we also see a lot of projects, uh, you know, kind of similar with the school-based health, but a lot of projects with libraries and community centers. And you might have all kinds of groups working with those. Again, you can have departments of health, you can have departments of labor working with libraries and maybe providing resume building skills, employment skills, technical certifications, um, again, just to name a few. We also see a lot of Department of Corrections projects under this grant, um, a lot of telemedicine into prisons and also educational services for inmates in hopes of reducing recidivism. And just to round it out, some next steps that we recommend, again, if you are interested, we would love to have a conversation with you and help you figure out if this grant is going to be a fit. Um, perhaps it's not, but then hopefully we can find another grant program that will be a fit for your organization. So again, please reach out to grants at zoom.us for that. If you do want to pursue the Rust DLT grant, one of the first things we recommend is just thinking about what is your project going to be about? Again, it's fairly open-ended. You can do so much with this grant. So just try to think about what is the biggest priority to you? Who do you want to work with also? That's another big piece, both internally and externally. And lastly, as I said, because the location of your sites, like the physical address is so important for this grant in terms of competitiveness, you really want to be thinking about that early as well. So. Who are you going to be working with? Are you bringing services just to your locations? Are you going to work with someone externally? These are all great things to think about very, very early. But I will stop sharing my screen now and turn it over to Morella. Thank you, Vicki. And welcome, everyone, to San Jose headquarters. Now, granted, this environment is corporate. It's not higher ed, but use your imagination. And what we're going to be highlighting next is now, let's say, yay, Let's think positively. You've received your award. Now, how can your environment be completely transformed so that you can provide amazing distance learning and support for all of your hybrid students and faculty members? So here's what we've got is a Zoom room running as a kiosk mode. Quick intro to Zoom Rooms. Zoom Rooms is a fully software-based experience, but we do need the hardware that complements the software. And every Zoom Room needs a dedicated PC, a computer, okay? It does need a microphone, speakers, a monitor, and a controller. In this instance, we have it all consolidated in one single device, allowing me to simply plug and play and connect to the Zoom Room that is using the virtual receptionist options. Now, this allows the end users to self-navigate on the screen and provide real-time support. Think about an education instance. How can this be applicable? Let's say you've got a student that is not feeling very well. Prior to calling the parents to have the student picked up, maybe you can actually reach out to a nurse practitioner that's working remotely, such as this. Here, the, let's say the faculty member selects virtual receptionist or maybe the nurse, and now it's prompted with six fully customizable options. So one of these could be a nurse practitioner and selecting that option initiates a Zoom meeting that someone will answer. Hello there, how can I help? Next, I want to go into one of my conference rooms, okay? Now, as I approach my conference room, all of our rooms is equipped with the option for you to have a room scheduling device, allowing you to simply navigate and see the room's availability. This 
is included with the Zoom Room, something that you just can potentially use. But now we're in the room itself, and this is where the Rust DLT grant really comes into effect and being able to help grant you the financial to support to turn on the lights of Zoom Rooms in multiple locations. There are tons of hardware options. Really, it's just a matter of aligning your needs with the space and in this instance, we are using an all-in-one appliance. Again, the consideration of consolidating the hardware into a simple device. As you can see, very simple installation process. This is now scalable and very user-friendly. So user-friendly that I even have the full controls of the Zoom Room available to me at my fingertips, such as the Zoom Room controller app, what I can do is ask the room to pair, well, with my device here, and I have one click to join as a result. Now that I'm in the room and I have the controls at my fingertips, I can gravitate towards any seat. Now you also notice in the room that there's additional visibility of the camera. This is Zoom Rooms running as a companion mode. Now we even have a view over the cloud. It does not require any wiring to the device itself. It's just pairing on the cloud. If content is being shared in this room, you'd also see the additional content be shared here on the screen. This is a really long bowling alley view of the conference room table. So as a result, I'm just going to use a controller to ask the device to auto framing. No user intervention, absolutely critical for your teachers because now they can move around freely. The camera will auto frame them respectively. And the technology also takes into account that if there's anyone outside on these glass walls, it's not gonna broadcast them to the far end. So notice if I'm a very active professor, I can do so absolutely hands-free because the technology does all the heavy lifting. Let's take it to another space. Okay, I think the next one that's worth mentioning is digital signage, which also included with the Zoom Rooms, may I add, and it's to scale one Zoom Room license and you can go digital signage happy. You can push out birthday announcements, maybe blood drive announcements, maybe it's a video that you know one of the students pushed out and you guys are highlighting that video to all of your digital signage players. But more than that, we can also stream live meetings to our digital signage, even integrated with our Zoom phone for E911 procedures and protocol, alerting everyone on campus that there's an evacuation in order. There's even a sharing key located on the top right hand corner of the screen, allowing you to use the spaces for collaboration purposes. So whatever's on your device, you wanna showcase to digital signage by all means, and you manage everything that we're highlighting today on the tour and more from one single contact, which is the Zoom portal. Very powerful, very simple, very scalable, very cost efficient. Now in this next stop, Vicki, what I'm going to do is going to a classroom environment was inspired by our customers who overnight had to enable video conferencing in many of their classrooms with absolutely no budget in place. These all-in-ones really became a hero for us in those instances. As you see here, we've got the incorporated Zoom Room in one single device. The cameras, the speakers, the microphone, the compute is all here, makes it very user-friendly and simple plug and play. Before I add on, what I do want to highlight is some of the functionality that you get embedded in the Zoom Room as part of the experience. One. All right, you wanna make a phone call? Absolutely. Use the embedded speakers and microphone and the controller to go ahead and make that dial. Another one for us is direct guest join. 
Thank you for choosing Zoom. We also believe in our platform, but there are others in the market today. Perhaps you need to join a Google Meet meeting or a Microsoft Teams or a Cisco WebEx. Just simply choose that option and input the meeting credentials and you will be a participant from the Zoom room into that meeting. At the end of the day, if you invite the Zoom room, you'll be able to do a very simple one click to join from the Zoom room very simple the end users don't need to learn anything because we integrate natively with office 365 exchange and google calendar okay now what i also will highlight here is our option to bring whiteboards etc so from my mobile device if i want to say bring in one of the whiteboards that i've been collaborating and working with remotely i can just pair my device to the room. This is so simple for your teachers to be able to use as well and do. Now in this case here, ha, we've got some friendly faces, but let's say, you know what, Ham, I don't think you should be uh, one of, I think you should be a T-Rex. I can go ahead and maneuver, do all of those changes right here. It's all in real time. It saves to the cloud. Very simple. I can elevate this to a Vita meeting, but all of the changes that I do is saved to the cloud, right? All right, another functionality in the Zoom rooms that's also very helpful is sharing content. This happens in an education environment all day, every day. You wanna do that? I'm gonna highlight the fact we're not even in a meeting yet, folks. This is just leveraging the Zoom room locally for collaboration. Of course, at any moment in time, if you do need to initiate the education lesson for hybrid users as well, by all means, activate that Zoom rooms and that meeting you can join with hybrid participants. But no, at the end of the day, the Zoom room becomes a local collaboration in a powerful tool that you can use every day, even annotate on top of that content, help your students to be on the same page with you. And if you wanna save anything, you can chat, let's say the content here that we created and email it to external users. Whew, not even in a meeting yet, but let's go ahead and join the meeting and I can do so with our integration, right? One click to join. I can also say, hello, Zoom, join meeting. Do you want to join the meeting? Yes. Starting the meeting. I really wanna highlight again, the fact that collaboration is just so critical and so important, but so is the video, so is the audio. Here we've got an all-in-one built-in microphone, built-in cameras. If at any moment in time, if I need to move this thing around on the cart, I can do so with confidence as the instructor that I can provide the lesson to my students and oh my gosh, technology in the past was such a deal breaker for so many instructors. It was so intimidating, but Zoom Rooms removes all of that complexity. I even have the option to have, you know, an HDMI input such as this case here i have a document camera but we are not talking about chips today what we are let's say talking about it's we're higher ed so we want to really keep the engagement of our i'm sorry um k-12 we want to keep the engagement with our students whatever it is that you want to put right underneath maybe it's just you know a simple lesson on a notebook etc you've got that additional ability even with the Zoom Room companion mode, again, no Pro AV is needed here. It's pairing in the cloud. I have the additional podium and camera. I even have this capacitive touch screen. So if I want to highlight anything on the screen, guys, this is amazing. Your teachers can all benefit from this sort of interaction here. We've got multiple displays. Your students, regardless of where they're located, your instructor, regardless of where they're located, they can approach another one of these devices start annotating annotating from here it the flexibility is remarkable all right so that's basically what we've got here in this room vicky and i'm going to take us to our last step what we've got here is a zoom room running on a pc and multiple cameras zoom rooms has the ability to support multiple streams zoom room has the ability to have multiple cameras. Let's show you how this comes together with our intelligent director. A conventional conference room looks like this. 
one camera, one source, bowling alley view. Now by selecting intelligent director here, also ask artificial intelligence to help us to scan the room, find all of the individuals that are presently located. In this case, if you noticed before, Ed was not visible from that one single camera source, but now he is because the camera sees that we have a participant right behind Angelina Jolie here. Now notice also as I go in the very back of the room, I don't, hands up, I am really not interacting with the technology at all. The technology is actually interacting with me. As I come to the back of the room, I am now visible. I am perfectly framed. And let's say I become better visible for another camera source. In this case, the one to the left. Notice how it did all of that transitioning with absolutely no end user intervention. This and much more is available to you through this Rust DLT grant. And I wish you the very best with your application process. And if we can help in any way, our team is standby and ready to support. Vicki, thank you so much. Back to you. We're going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Lance Ford uh, for, for another demo. One of the things that is a power, powerful part of Zoom in distance learning is the ability to take these live moments and transpose them into on-demand experiences. So whether it's in a K-12 environment, whether it's in a higher ed environment, or whatever environment you're looking for to pursue that grant, part of the power, again, is being able to say there are so many learning modalities that we need to be able to address multiples. However, for most faculty members, they get intimidated by the technology because the technology really is um, the concept that becomes the content of the course and not just the conduit of the course. How does Zoom address this? Well, let me show you real quick because I think as we go through this, this may make a little more sense. One of the places that most faculty members live and spend the majority of their time is their learning management system. Um, now, our learning management system here that I'm gonna show you today happens to be Canvas, but it could be Blackboard, it could be Desire to Learn, it could be Schoology, Moodle. It's really a potato, potato thing, as long as it's LTI. So I'm logged in here directly into the LMS. And uh, you see my announcements, my assignments, my discussions. At marketplace.zoom.us, my administrator set up for me the plugin that allows me to have Zoom with Dr. Ford. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click that. Now, once I click that, I'm presented with the opportunity to schedule a new meeting. One of the things I do at the college is I teach adjunct. Um, and so I'm teaching music appreciation this uh, fall and actually next spring as well. So. Let's just make it music appreciate. I better put my glasses on so I can screw this up. Uh, in this Canvas instance, this is actually course section and group aware. So maybe this live meeting is for multiple sections or just this section, or maybe it's just for a group of students from my Canvas course. How about the on-demand viewing? Well, same thing. It can either be by all courses or by just this course, this section. Uh, maybe it's um, different groups that can watch the recording. All that's available here. When does the meeting start? Well, let's just pretend it starts at three o'clock today. It's an hour long. I don't know how your courses work, but mine work on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday schedule. And the end of my semester, fortunately, is not Christmas. It's uh, December the 15th, so we'll set it there. Now, faculty members may have been given a room that they would like, that they're, they're, they're assigned to teach in, or maybe there's a, a lab or something they'd like to use as a part of this class meeting. I can simply go in and type in the name of that classroom that I've been given to teach. There it is. So when I get in, well, I'm not going to tell you. We'll just look at it here in just a second. From there, we can say we want to pre-assign breakouts for our course, and maybe we want to use those course groups once again as the genesis for those breakouts. And I like to record my classes so students who maybe physically can't make it or maybe just are not there uh, can go back and review it. We'll hit save. Now, in this particular world, Sometimes faculty members are ill themselves, or maybe they're on the road at a conference. They need to teach that course online from Canvas. They can do that by starting here. Or since we've been assigned a classroom and that space has been outfitted with some of these amazing grant dollars, we have the ability to just go right on over to it. So let's um, let's take a quick walk over to the classroom. Here's my little poly unit, uh, poly HP unit that's been assigned to this classroom, making it a Zoom room. And it's attached to a touch screen. 
And it says music appreciation will automatically start in three minutes. Now, why does it say automatically start? Some faculty members are technophobic enough to the point where they just don't want to touch anything. And that's just fine. It works their rooms. We can automatically start. We can automatically stop. We can give the administrator of the room remote control to be able to mute and unmute microphones if necessary to really help facilitate that. But I think you'll see real quickly once we get this started, <laughs> you'll also see my nasty, messy office, um, that there's really not a lot of intervention that the faculty has to do. I'm not going to wait for the next two minutes and make you wait. I'm just going to go ahead and fire it off. So we're starting a meeting. That has that music approach me. Now, Zoom is never going to record anyone unless Zoom lets you know you're being recorded. So, hey, we got that. We're being recorded. The camera comes on. The camera will locate me. The camera will begin to track me around the space and find where I'm standing so that as I present to my learners here, as well as my learners there, then everyone knows what it looks like here in the space. Now, there are multiple poly units that support multiple cameras as well. Some of them are all-in-ones. Uh, some of them are full-on room-based systems based on HP compute. You just need to talk to your folks who are helping you plan your space as to how you expect to engage in that space. Regardless of what the form factor looks like, one of the things that's important for me is that I can give polls and quizzes. Those quizzes, I'm going to go ahead and fire one off. Those quizzes and the, hit the speed grader, the results do, and they can be gone right on into my speed grader so that I can add them to my gradebook inside Canvas. Another thing that I have the ability to do is whiteboard. So once I open up a whiteboard, I can determine, do I want my students to be able to collaborate with me, or is this just more of a, they're going to watch, and then periodically, I'll give them the ability to collaborate, okay? So we're firing off a whiteboard. These whiteboards can be created as a part of the live experience on the fly, utilizing either a blank sheet of paper or one of over 200 templates. They can be created before class. Because with whiteboards, they no longer just live during the live meeting. They live before, they live during, and they live after. So students can make modifications or maybe ask questions on that information. I'm going to bring up some notes here. And we'll just say, hello. This will be my notes for today's class. Hello, webinar. Right? So now I've given a quiz. I've given some notes. We recorded all that. And class is over. Come back over to my desk because the synergy between the live experience, oh, there it goes, it automatically joined, sorry about that. The synergy between the live class and the asynchronous portions of class is just really seamless for the faculty member. If you go right here and share the screen one more time. So now we're back after class into our learning management system. The whiteboard, you remember? I said, hello webinar on a whiteboard. Here's my whiteboards. There's my hello webinar. I'd like for my students that are part of this particular group project to be able to see it later, maybe make modifications, or at least be able to comment on it. So now it's here, so when they come and log in, they can actually engage with the whiteboard. If I know that some of these concepts are gonna be difficult for my learners, and maybe I need to schedule some time for us to get together, all that scheduling capability is built in. In fact, I can edit um, the schedule, I've chosen mine to be 1045 to 1145 on Mondays, and they're 15 minute blocks. Student comes in, chooses a time, both they and I get an email with a, a unique Zoom link for our time together. What about knowing who attended the class? Well, it's built in. There's the report right there. I can click that report and get a student name, what time they joined, how long they were there. And if it's important enough to me, I can actually make that a part of my attendance report directly back into my Canvas gradebook. You're here 100% of the time, you get 100% of the points. You join five minutes late, you get 90% of the points. You can add whatever ranges you want as a part of this. Next, what about those recordings? Well, they're right here. I have the ability to come in and just turn those on so the students can come in and watch the content. I have, they don't, I have the ability to see how many times this has been downloaded, how many times has it been viewed, who viewed it, what days, what time frames. If you're doing that flipped or inverted lesson process where you're creating content before learners get there that they're watching, this is so wonderful to have. Now, you may not decide to do what I'm about to show you, but part of the power here is Zoom is an entire communications platform that does not rule out phone. So maybe I need the ability to SMS my learners, or maybe I need to be able to call my learners to engage with them. I call them and it appears to them as if I'm calling directly from the school's number. 
everything is logged, all the information, all the engagements, all the files that are shared in a chat, they're all logged as a part of that correspondence. So everyone knows who said what, when they said it, and no one is ever falsely accused of doing anything. So we've talked a little bit about, from a perspective from San Jose, what this looks like on a campus. You've now seen it from a day in the life of me as the instructor. Now let's talk a little bit more about funding resources and what options are out there. Always uh, reach out if you have any questions. I'm just lance.ford at zoom.us. Victoria, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Ford. Please reach out to grants at zoom.us. We'd love to answer your questions. We'd love to set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation with you to discuss this grant further or maybe look at other grant programs that could be a fit. So please uh, don't hesitate to reach out and just thank you all so much for joining us today.